Hello. In this section, uh, we're going to talk about the composition of cosine and arc cosine in different order. Okay. That is to say that we're going to consider this relationship. Okay. Cosine of arc cosine x, right? And uh, the other one would be arc cosine of cosine x. So we're going to consider these kind of composition. Okay, so before we do that, let's recap on the curves we have studied. You know, we have studied cosine curve. We have graphed from negative 2 pi to positive 2 pi, the entire interval. And we also have graphed arc cosine. We talk about how arc cosine is made point by point, okay? To summarize that we're gonna look at these three functions, these three functions, right? Uh, let me make it just a little bit smaller. Okay, so these three functions. For these three functions, right? The one we know, the black curve, which is a cosine, okay? And we know it's even function. It's not one-to-one. -one. It increases sometimes and decreases some other times. Its domain is all real numbers and the range is between negative one and positive one. And uh, cosine is between negative one to positive one. And uh, arc cosine, arc cosine has a domain from negative one to positive one because arc cosine takes ratio as input and ratio can only be between negative one to positive one. And, uh, and of course, for the cosine here, the range, right? Domain is all real numbers, the range is from negative one to positive one. Now, arc cosine, you look at, you look at here, is taking ratio to produce angle. And the angle can only be to zero to pi. In other words, we have mentioned that when in the making of arc cosine, we have, okay, so let me put it here, right? So we, we crossed out of quadrant three and quadrant four. So in the making of arc cosine, we crossed out these two quadrants. These are no flight zones, okay? So arc cosine has a domain, okay, domain, which is from negative one to positive one, it's right here, right? And the range, the range, okay, are angles from zero to pi inclusive, okay? So cosine angle, the output will be between zero to pi. In other words, and this is what we have, less than equals true, arc cosine x is gonna be less than or equals to pi, okay? So this is the, arc cosine, right? Graphically, graphically, we see the cosine curve, the red, right? And we did a point by point in the, in the, in the other lesson, in the other lesson, okay? On the special angles and terminals. So we did that point by point. And the inverse function of, for arc cosine, however, is not this one. Okay, these two are not inverse to each other. The inverse to arc cosine is a cosine, but in the domain of zero to pi. Right there, zero to pi. So that's the domain. And everything else stay the same. Everything else stay the same. Okay, so this special so this pair are inverse function to each other, 
this pair are inverse function to each other. Okay, so on the curve, on the curve, right? If we draw the curve, if we look at these two functions, okay, we don't need that anymore. Okay, we have one, one underneath, right? So the cosine curve, okay, if we make it larger, right? And we look at these two functions that are inverse to each other. Okay. Wait. What am I doing? Okay. So these two functions, if we look at the corresponding curve, let me uh, make some adjustment. Let me make some adjustment. That's going to be. One, two, one, right? So these are the two functions that are inverse to each other. Oh, wait, I need to get, this is gonna be tricky, okay? Because please be patient with me because no graph will graph that specific cosine. So I'm going to have to, to do this, okay? If I try to make them comparable, okay, I've tried to make them comparable one with one. And so these are the two functions that are inverse to each, to each other, but at the same time, I need to, I need to wipe out this piece. Okay, I need to wipe out this piece. Okay, I need to wipe out this piece. Okay, so this is one, this is one. So these are the two functions that are inverse to each other. Okay, and this point of course is negative one pi. Okay, it's negative one pi. Um, I think I probably could make it show, make it show, hold on. That's gonna be negative, negative 1.25. Okay, so there's a, uh, okay. So I'm going to just wipe it, wipe this out, wipe this out. Okay, wipe that out. Okay. There. These two functions are inverse to each other. Never mind this one. Okay, just get rid of it. Okay, because we know that's one, right? Zero one. So these two functions are inverse to each other. And the black one, so this black one is a cosine function, okay, between zero to pi. And the other one, the red one, okay, the red one is arc cosine function. So these are the two functions that are inverse to each other. Now, we understand that the inverse function to each other, they have the property that, you know, when we composite them, right? So this property. Okay, so let us move forward, right? I need to clean this up. Okay, so for these two functions, for these two functions, I'm gonna specify these two functions, right? These two functions are, okay? These two functions are, let me make it just a little bit smaller there. Okay, now, the f function is cosine x, where x is in the interval from zero to pi, from zero to pi, okay? Is inverse, is inverse. F inverse is arc cosine. Oops, that's arc cosine. Okay, and these two functions are inverse to each other. Okay, the domain for arc cosine, of course, we know that's from negative one to positive one. 
positive one. So one's domain is the other's range, right? One's domain is the other's range. We know that there's a property, there's a property for um, inverse function to each, you know, a pair of inverse functions to each other. We have F inverse, I'm sorry, F composite F inverse, okay? Is it going to be equals to X provided the X is in the domain of X inverse, okay? So this X is the input for X, F inverse first. And so that X is gonna be in the domain of the inverse, which is from negative one to positive one, okay? And there's another, there's another one, which is F inverse composite F of X, okay? And this X, okay, is the input for F. The input for F is from zero to pi. And that is into, is equals to X. Okay, we know we have this property, don't we? If we apply this property to our current pair, it still works. It still works. So let's do, let's do the substitution. Okay. So this equals to f of f inverse of x equals to x. Right. Everything else stays the same. And this other one, okay, is f inverse. Oops. F inverse of F of X, F of X, okay, by definition. Now we're gonna do it layer by layer. We're gonna do it layer by layer. So this piece apply to our current function. Okay, so be, please be patient with me. Okay, and this piece apply to our current function respectively. So we're doing these two pieces. Okay. F inverse of, F inverse is arc cosine x. So arc cosine x, right? Then arc cosine x now become the input for F, which is a cosine. So F becomes cosine, right? And the other one, F is a cosine X, which X is from zero to pi, and F inverse is arc cosine of that. So these are the two identities. Okay, these are the two identities. When we composite cosine and arc cosine. Okay. One of the places that confuses a lot of our students and people say, oh, when we see cosine, which cosine do you talk about? Do you talk about, do you talk about the cosine, the black curve or the cosine between zero to pi? Well, here's the answer. Whenever we talk about cosine, we always refer to the black curve. If we refer to the one, the, you know, any specific piece of cosine, okay? We will specify it, okay? So this will be the situation that we, for this cosine, we still refer to, we still refer to the cosine in general, okay? The, the cosine as we knew, as we know, but when we have a specific interval to consider for certain fact to be true, then we will specify where it is. So this is unless otherwise specified, okay? So I'm gonna write it down. Cosine function is always considered, okay? When cosine, fu when cosine function is referred, is referred to, okay? It is 
this function, it is cosine x. And by default, okay, by default, by default, it is the cosine with x in the domain of all real numbers from negative infinity to positive infinity. Okay, unless otherwise specified. So if we mean to, this cosine is gonna be just a piece and we will specify that specific piece. Okay, so this identity, right? The first identity is pretty straightforward. The second identity, okay? If I remove this condition, Okay, and this will be false. This will be false. Okay, because this cosine refer to the cosine like this. Okay, and this is not true. This is not true. Therefore, we're gonna remove that box. We're gonna remove that box. This will be true. And what will be, uh, I'm sorry, this will be false. And what will be true? The truth would be that statement. This is true. This is true. Okay. Now, let's look at some examples. Let's look at some examples. Okay. So to carry out these, these examples, I like to take our um, just take our identity, right? The unit circle and the curve is you know it's, it's nearby. So let's look at some examples. So example number one. Okay, composition composition of cosine and arc cosine. All right. Look at this example, the first one. So this is a cosine of arc cosine. Cosine of arc cosine. And here's we have four fifths, four fifths, okay? We can apply this property. We can apply this property, can we? We can apply this property, okay? You can see they match perfectly. So this property can apply. How do we know you can apply? Because the ratio, right? The ratio, oops, wait, sorry. The ratio, the ratio obviously is four fifths, right? Ratio is four fifths. Apparently this ratio is between negative one to one, right? According to this identity, and this is gonna be true, okay? So this was X, X is between negative one and one, right? So four fifths, so that's gonna be four fifths. The answer is gonna be four fifths. Okay, now what if, what if you say, oh, I'm, I kind of get confused about this whole process, right? What if I get confused about this whole process? Well, then you can go in the following steps. Okay, so I'm gonna give you, show you another way. I'm gonna show you another way. Okay, and the other way would be, right? arc cosine four fifths, right? We know arc cosine four fifths is gonna be an angle, right? What is it? It's not one of the special ones, but we know it's gonna be an angle. We know that this is gonna be an angle. We assume it's theta and where would it be? It's gonna be in the range of arc cosine and it's gonna be between zero to pi. That's the range of arc cosine, right? In particular, actually, it's going to be between zero to pi over two. How do I know that? 
Okay, let's look at the unit circle. Let's look at the unit circle. Let's look at the unit circle. When we are constructing arc cosine, we know that all of these ratios, all the red numbers in the second quadrant, they're negative, right? We, uh, we, don't use, we don't use the third quadrant and fourth quadrant. These are no flight zone. And all these numbers are negative and all these ratios are positive. Now we have a positive ratio. And of course the angle is gonna be positive between zero to pi over two. Even though all the angles are positive for the range of arc cosine, the range, but these ratios are negative and these ratios are positive. And therefore, this angle actually is not only between zero, to, oops, not only between zero to pi, okay? It's actually also between zero to pi over two because it's only gonna be somewhere here. So the terminal, right? So that angle measured from the standard position, which is a four fifths, is gonna be, whoops, this is a white color. Okay, so that's not gonna do much. Okay, so I'm gonna change the color. Okay, so that terminal, that angle with that, that theta is going to be between the reds, somewhere between the reds. Okay, I think it will be somewhere here. Okay, so this is theta, this is theta. Okay, so for this point, for this point, Right, so that's theta, that's a theta. So theta, okay, theta is going to be equals to, no, cosine theta is going to be four fifths. It's going to be four fifths, four fifths. So, at this point, at this point, right, on the unit circle, it's not going to be one of the red numbers we have now, but this point, this point, right, this heart, this heart, will also have a pair of number that comes with it, okay? There's a red, there's a red number, and there's a blue number. The red number is four-fifths. Wait. Okay, let me make it red. The red number is a four fifths because that's a cosine value. The blue, num uh, the blue number, we don't know. We can find out, right? So we can easily find out, okay? So there is a blue number we don't need to know in this case, but you can find out using Pythagorean theorem. So we're not gonna do it, okay? Now cosine theta is four fifths. Now let's see what is the answer to our question. The answer to our question now is we have cosine, right? Arc cosine, four fifths, right? And cosine, arc cosine four fifths is theta. Right? So we don't need the parentheses anymore. Consine theta is what? Four fifths. You see, it's a four fifths. Therefore, this is going to be the red number, four fifths. Four fifths. Okay, do you see, do you see that? Uh, you know, you see that, uh, that process, right? You see that process. So either way, you're going to get four fifths. And so what have we applied here? We applied the domain and range of arc cosine very often, okay, very often, okay? So let's look at another question. Let's look at another question, example number two. Example number two. And this time the question is, give us a precise value of cosine Negative three fifths. Okay, I'm just making up these examples. Okay, negative three fifths. 
In fact, in this case, this property applies because negative three fifths is between negative one and one. Therefore, this answer is really just negative three fifths. But I do want to give you another way to do it, just like the previous one. Okay, another way, okay, because showing you the other way, I hope it will help you to understand. Okay, will help help you to understand. All right. So working with this piece, pretend we don't know the answer, pretend we forget about this shortcut. Now, we understand, okay? Arc cosine of a ratio, okay? Arc cosine of this ratio is gonna produce an angle. And this angle is going to be where? Between zero to pi right? The range of arc cosine. As long as the ratio between negative one to positive one is going to produce an angle between zero to pi, right? So once again, we chop down quadrant three and quadrant four, right? And the terminal of this angle, right? Now I know that because this is a negative ratio, sorry, this is a negative ratio, because this is a negative ratio, negative ratios had terminals in the second quadrant. Therefore, I can be certain that this theta is not only in zero to pi, to pi I can even make it precise, uh, make it smaller in scope. It's between pi over two to pi, okay? In particular, I can even use an open interval because I know it's not gonna be a special value. Okay, these are just fine, you know, just fine point. As a result, we also know that cosine theta is going to be equal to negative three fifths. Negative three fifths. And this angle can only be between pi over two to pi, and the ratio is negative three fifths. So can we draw the terminal of that angle? Absolutely. Okay, so that terminal, right, from the standard position and terminate at the red number equals to negative three fifths. So where is negative three fifths? Huh? Negative root two over two is about, is about uh, negative 0.7 something. So it's gonna be, um, so this is a negative 0.6, right? Negative 0.6. Where would that be? I think it's somewhere there. Okay, so that's the terminal. You see the angle is measured from standard position. Okay, and there's a point. There's a point. And for this point, for this point, we will have a red number for this point and we will have a blue number for that point. And the red number, of course, is negative three fifths. The red number is negative three fifths. How about the blue number? We can find out if we, we, if we want, okay? But we don't need to find it here. So the blue number is to be found, and I, I'm leaving that for you. Okay, all you have to do is just apply, you just apply the Pythagorean theorem. So you can see there, every point on this terminal, well, on, on the unit circle, there's a red number, blue number, red number, blue number. There are lots of them, there are lots of them. And now it's time that we can wrap this question up. Okay, so what does this equal to? This will equal to, right? Since this piece is theta, because that's what we assumed, right? That's a theta. And cosine theta, we can remove that parenthesis. So cosine, cosine theta equals what? Negative three-fifths. So the answer is found, right? So whether you use a shortcut or analyzing yourself, we get the same answer. We get the same answer, okay? 
you can see identifying the range of arc cosine is very, very important. Range basically tell us what to expect, what to expect. All right, so let's look at another example. Let's look at another example. Okay, this will be example number three. Example number three, EX, example number three. Okay, example number three, I have, I have cosine, arc cosine, cosine of arc cosine of negative four. Can we use any one of the properties? Can we use any one of these properties? Can we use any one of these properties? Apparently not, right? This one doesn't apply and this one does not apply either because the, the number at the place of X is not in the interval, negative one to positive one, so we cannot apply. What is more, what is the domain for arc cosine? What is domain for arc cosine? The domain for arc cosine is between negative one to positive one. And this negative four is outside the domain. Therefore, this is undefined. Undefined, no answer, undefined. We can see this clearly from the graph, can't we? Right? The, the red curve is only defined from negative one to positive one. It doesn't go beyond this interval and therefore it's undefined. Okay, it's undefined. Next, okay, let's look at another example. Example number four. Example number four. Okay, this one we're gonna have arc cosine of cosine pi over three, pi over three. Does any one of the property apply? The second one does, right? The second one does. Because pi over three, pi over three, x in the place of x is pi over three in place of x. And x is between zero to pi, therefore this answer is just what? It's just pi over three. Okay. Then, then you say, what if I forgot this, right? I forgot this. And there's always another way. Another way. How would you do it the other way? How would you how do we do it the other way? Well. We do it from inside out. We do it from inside out. Okay. So here we got, we go from inside out arc cosine of that cosine pi over three, right? What is a cosine pi over three? What is a cosine pi over three? You can use the unit circle, right? ARD, you measure pi over three, that's a counterclockwise measurement, right? Terminal, terminal over here. You see that definition is, is super duper important. Wait, you never know we're gonna use it, right? You always got, are ready to use it. Measure from standard position pi over three for cosine pi over three, and there's a red number there waiting for us, right? So this is gonna be half, this is gonna be half. Right, this is gonna be half, and we don't need the parentheses. And what is arc cosine half? In the making of arc cosine, that we know that this one has, you know, half is the input, which is a ratio. The output is, the, is any angle. So this angle, this is gonna be an angle. This angle, the output is gonna be where? Between zero to pi, between zero to pi, right? And that answer is gonna be pi over three. 
pi over three, right? Remember that one-to-one -one correspondence when we are making, when we're making arc cosine, right? So for each ratio, there's exactly one answer, one angle corresponds to it. And we made that table, right? We made that table defined, defined. Okay, so let's look at a couple more examples. So you see the examples are getting more and more complicated. Okay, so this one is should be example number four, five. Five, let me see, four, five. Okay, and this one is going to be like this. Arc cosine of cosine, okay? Negative pi over four. Ah, what do we get here? Could any one of the property apply? Could any one of the shortcut applies? Could any one of the shortcut applies? Of course, this one doesn't, doesn't fit. And the next one doesn't apply because negative pi over four is not in zero to pi. So none of them apply. So this guy does not apply. Does not apply. Okay, now, now what do we do? Well, of course we can do it from inside out. We can do it from the inside out, right? Now, the other perspective, the other perspective, some people say, wouldn't that be equals to negative pi over four? The answer is wrong because arc cosine, no matter what this guy is, okay? No matter what it is here, arc cosine is always going to be where? It's going to be an angle between zero to pi. That's what it meant. That's the range is from zero to pi, okay? So it cannot be negative pi over four. It's outside the range, okay? So what do we do? Okay, so we, before we do, before we work out the answer, we already know, we already know, okay, this is, the answer is going to be between zero to pi. Okay, the answer is going to be between zero to pi. I'm going to show you two different, two different ways to do it. Okay, one way is we do it from inside out. So we know the answer is going to be between zero to pi. So it cannot be negative pi over two. Okay. And these two properties does not apply. So we're gonna look at the unit circle. We're gonna look at the unit circle. If we do it from inside out, if we do it from inside out, what do we get, right? So we first get, we first get measure the angle, right? We're gonna measure the angle and we're gonna work the inside. We're gonna work the inside, right? So we're gonna work the inside cosine negative pi over four. And we're gonna measure the angle from standard position clockwise because it's a negative angle. And we get root two over two. Okay, you see that red number is the square root of two. Wait. Okay, so this is gonna be root two over two. And then we work with arc cosine root two over two. What's arc cosine root two over two? Work arc cosine arc root two over two. When we work with arc cosine, we know that these two quadrants are gone, right? So that one-to-one -one correspondence between angles from zero to pi corresponds to the red number, period, right? So this answer is going to be what? What's the answer going to be? the answer is gonna be what? Pi over four, pi over four, because root two over two corresponds to pi over four and pi over four falls in the range of arc cosine, okay? 
and the one more way to do it. One more way to do it. Another way. Okay. Another way. Another way to do it here is that do we recall that cosine is an even function? Do we recall cosine is an even function? Cosine as an even function, that means arc cos for cosine negative pi over four is the same as the cosine pi over four. Even function means when the input are opposite, the output are the same. Opposite input corresponds to the same output. Okay, because cosine is what? Cosine is what? Is an even function. Even function means what? It means when the inputs are opposite, right? When the inputs are opposite. Okay, when inputs are opposite, we have inputs opposite. Opposite input, same output. Okay, opposite input, same output. So input are x, negative x and x, they are opposite to each other. And of course, if this is true for any, and that is true for any x in the domain right, of, of cosine, and of course it is true for negative pi to pi, yes? So of course it is true, right? If it is true for any situation, and of course it is true for the, the special situation when x is pi over four. Oops, pi over four. Okay, I mean to copy pi over four. So when the input is pi, pi over four, negative pi over four, this, these are opposite inputs, they have the same output. And now we can apply this property. What property? What property do you think? This guy. Uh, yeah. Okay. Now we can apply this property, you see that? Wait, sorry. Okay, so now we can apply this property. Okay, so you see arc cosine, cosine pi over four, and pi over four is in the place of x, x is between zero to pi. And pi over four is indeed between zero to pi. So the answer is gonna be what? Pi over four. Boom, you see, these are two different ways we can do it. One way is using, is using the property of, um, you know, just go, just do it from inside out, from, from you know, definition, unit circle, whatever you say. The second way is the, um, the second way is by using the even function property, using the input, uh, even function property, okay? Okay, so let's look at another example. Okay, example number six. So look at this one, right? Arc cosine of cosine Five pi over six, five pi over six. Okay. Do those two properties work for us? Does this property work? Does it work? That would be the shortcut, right? Does that shortcut work? Does that shortcut work? Yes, it does. Because X, which is five pi over six here is between zero to pi. Therefore, if you, if we are familiar with this property and know when it is true, it is just simply equals to what? It just simply equals to five pi over six and we're done. However, however, okay? Another way, you just do it from inside out. 
okay? Suppose you're not certain, because after all, you don't want to memorize so many properties, right? So you don't remember what you forgot, you're not sure in any way, then just do it from inside out. So I'm just merely showing you that it's not the end of the world if you don't remember certain you know, magic shortcut or tricks. It's okay. You can just figure out from the definition. So how do we figure out what is five pi over six, right? And uh, you just measure the angle from standard position, counterclockwise measured up to five pi over six. If you like to convert it to degrees, it's 150 degrees, right? So this is the angle five pi over six and the reference angle is pi over six. And you have a red number. If you need to, to construct triangle to, to find it, you certainly can. And right here we get negative root three over two, right? Negative root three over two. Okay, negative root three over two. And then what? And then what? Arc cosine is considered, right? When arc cosine is considered, what do we do? From the unit circle, right? From the unit circle, that we know that quadrant three, quadrant four is no flight zone, right? And negative root three over two is corresponding to this terminal. So you're gonna get the answer five, five pi over six anyway. Oops, right, you're gonna get that anyway, right? So either way, we get the right answer. We get the right answer, okay? So one is just using the so-called shortcut if you are clear about these, otherwise, no big deal, right? You can figure out by being aware of the domain and range of arc cosine and how arc cosine is constructed, how arc cosine is constructed. So let's look at one more cos uh, example number seven, okay? And this one, I have arc cosine, cosine of negative three pi over four. Ha, negative three pi over four. Does any one of the property applies? Does any one of the property applies? Does any one of the property applies? This one doesn't apply for sure, right? Does this one apply? It doesn't because negative three pi over four is outside the interval of zero to pi. It doesn't apply. Neither one applies. So what do we do? There are two ways to do it. There are two ways to do it. Okay. One way. One way. I don't know what, what, what you think. Okay, if you understand the previous examples, you might be thinking of using the even function property, right? You might be using even function property and then arc of cosine and of uh, cosine negative three pi over four is going to be equals to cosine three pi over four. Okay, because it's even function even function, okay? Cosine is even function, right? With that property, and now that property applies because three pi over four now is in that interval, right? And therefore the answer is gonna be three pi over four. Three pi over four, okay? And this, pro this property applied, this property applied. Okay, then, then you say, hey, I, I forgot an even function. I, I forgot a cosine is even function. Or then we, have, we do have another way. We do have another way, provided that, provided that we still have the basic concept. We have the basic definition. We have the definition with us. Okay, so suppose we have the definition with us, right? What do we do? We do it from inside out. 
Okay, so we keep the arc cosine, so we're working on arc cosine negative three pi over four. Okay, to do that, to do that, right, what do we do? We will measure the angle clockwise from the standard position, measure up to negative three pi over four, so we ended up here. This is the terminal. Reference angle is pi over four, and this angle is negative. Okay, so this angle is negative, negative three pi over four, right? And we also identify the arc lens, right? You know the arc lens, right? The arc lens. Okay, so that's negative three pi over four. Cosine, Right, it terminates at this terminal, at this this terminal here, and there's a point on the unit circle waiting for us, right? And on that at that point is is negative root three uh, root two over two, negative root two over two. So that's the ratio for cosine negative three pi over four. Okay, and now this piece is done. Now this piece is done. The inside is done. And now we're dealing with, with a cosine, with arc cosine, negative root two over two. When we are dealing with arc cosine negative two over two, we understand that quadrant three and quadrant four are gone, okay? And, and then you're gonna look for the red number. Where do we find negative root two over two? Here, we find negative root two over two, we found it, right? Right here. And there's a dot here, there's a dot here, that point. How do we reach a dot from a standard position? How do we reach that dot from a standard position? We measure from standard posi position, be aware the range of article size from zero to pi, so we can only measure counterclockwise, cannot fly over those forbidden area, and there we go, we get the answer is three pi over four. Same thing, you see? Same, same way. So they're shortcut, they're not shortcut. Okay, they're not shortcut. So one more example. Okay, one more example. I think eight examples should be sufficient. Okay, example number eight. Okay, so this one we are going to be working with is arc cosine and here cosine negative, okay? Negative uh, four pi over three. Four pi over three. Negative four pi over three. Okay, negative four pi over three. Does either proper, does either shortcut apply? This one is impossible to apply. Does this one apply? Does this property apply? Does that apply? Does not apply, right? Because negative four pi over three is, is way outside. So it does not apply. What do we do? Right? You can say, hey, we can do even function, odd function. Sure, you can do even function. Okay, so cosine is even function. Even function will lead us to what? What does that lead us to? That will lead us to our cosine, which is still outside. Inside becomes, inside becomes cosine four pi over three. Four pi over three. 4 pi over 3. There's a cosine 4 pi over 3. Can, can we apply this property? Can we apply this property again? No, because 4 pi over 3 is larger than pi, right? 4 pi over 3 is still outside. It doesn't apply again. And then what do you, what you do? Then what we do? Right? Then what we do? Okay. That's not the end of the world, right? So what is a cosine four pi over three? Right? So we still work from inside. 
we still work from inside, cosine four pi over three, we would just follow our definition, okay? From the standard position, we measure four pi over three, four pi over three, four pi over three, we terminate here. We terminate here, okay? And then we see the red number, we see the red number, what is that red number? The red number is a negative half. Therefore, this is gonna be negative half, okay? And what is our cosine negative half? So now, now we're done with cosine four pi over three, and we're dealing with arc cosine negative half. When we're doing that, we know that the quadrant three and quadrant four, we don't need those, right? Quadrant three, quadrant four is out of our consideration. And where is negative half? You look through the red number on the top, we found a negative half. What is a negative half? Negative half is corresponding to a terminal. That terminal, how do we get to that terminal from standard position? From standard position, right? Counterclockwise, because arc cosines range is between zero to pi, positive or zero or, or zero. Therefore, this is two pi over three. So the answer here is two pi over three. It's well in the range of arc cosine. Okay, I think we have touched um, all of these examples, okay? Almost every type that you, you, you may encounter in, in your homework and quizzes, okay? If you have more questions, don't hesitate to reach out to me. Thank you for watching.